Hello everyone and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice. This is still not going the direction I thought it would. I thought for sure Owen was going to be like crazy uh, psycho like genocide Jill style serial killer. Uh, Owen is five. <laughs> so... I'm going to go ahead and say Owen probably didn't do it. Eek. Where can I even go from here? This she show. She show. Wait. Owen, do you know something about what happened to your master? Ugh. Come on, buddy. Why don't you tell Auntie Athena what happened? Ugh. What a scary lady. I, I, I'm not scary. Look. Look at Auntie's big, big smile. Oh, stop scaring the child. Tell me about your master, please. Pretty please with sugar on top. Uh, okay. Shisha was super nice. He always played with me. Just like, just like a real grandpa. I loved Shisha. You know, do you sense anything behind his words? I sense his sadness. Sadness so pure, it's heart rending. But no discord. Prosecutor said Mati is right. Owen isn't the killer. Then don't you find it odd? Find what odd? Let's review what we've learned so far. You want to rearrange the Karata cards to pin the blame on Bucky. Well, that's because the original message implicated Owen. But Owen is only five years old and absolutely adores Master Tornado. Exactly. The other three personalities also have no motive for murder. If Owen isn't the true culprit, then the person who first laid out the cards probably wouldn't have been Master Tornado. So then who did it? Defense, do the appearance of Owen help you figure anything out? Also, anyone else uh, feeling a little dizzy right now? Yes, Your Honor. I now know who it was that first laid out the Karata cards. But I thought it was the victim. Right? No, Your Honor. I don't believe it was. The one who first arranged the Karata cards on the table is none other than... Wet noodle number three. <laughs> the fifth person out, clearly. Uh, the true killer. Thankfully, they let me be vague on that because. Like, who do we even know at this point? Ah, uh, well. Dang. If it's. Not Yendo. Then it's gotta be Giru. But that seems weird. Because, I mean, well, it wouldn't be Bucky, because that's our client, and that would defeat the whole purpose of the trial. Okay. True killer. I believe the person who laid the cards out is the very person who killed Typhoon Tornado. How quickly you move on to a new target when your Owen theory proves false. You pull Cunning. I don't know what a pull Cunning is, but I know I am definitely not one. Before you start with the sermons, why don't you hear me out? Mm, yes, let's hear the defense's reasoning. Uh, please proceed, Miss Sykes. But if you're bluffing, I won't go easy on you. I understand, Your Honor. Now then, please recall the original crime scene. Who did the Kurita card's name when the scene was discovered? Mm, let's see, I believe they implicated the defendant, uh, Bucky White. That's right, but we found the- But we then found out that the message originally read Owen Forth. Which implicated the young boy, Owen. Exactly. And the person who rearranged the cards was undoubtedly Uendo. Undoubtedly Uendo. Uendo may have kept silent, but we could be sure he already knew his master was dead. He's tampering with the crime scene. Using the TV all but proves it. <laughs> I, I confess. Tampered with the crime scene. Yeah. The reason you and I rearranged the Karate cards and moved the TV was because he saw the Owen Fourth message. 
and was convinced Owen had committed the crime. Right on, Prosecutor Blackwell. It would seem that Owen and the other three personalities don't share the same memories. Really, there's no fourth personality. It's just the three of us in here. Yuendo feared that Owen had killed Master Tornado, so he tried to hide Owen from us. Oh. <laughs> Turns out Owen is but a five-year-old child incapable of hurting the fly, let alone his beloved master. So naturally, the culprit must be somebody else. And this somebody else, the true killer, tried to pin the crime on Owen. Uh. Mm, yeah, see, that, that does make sense. This is not but conjecture composed of half-truths and fantasy. Who then do you maintain murdered the victim? I believe Owen might know something about that. What? I refuse to allow such impromptu testimony from a five-year-old no you less, because he'll make me look stupid. Stupider than I already look. Such a young child is incapable of producing anything coherent. But... Your desperation is disgraceful. You should realize when it is time to let it go and... I, I saw it. I saw a seashell getting... Owen, you do know something, don't you? Y yeah. No, oh my, is this true? If so, we must have Owen testify immediately. Don't you agree, Prosecutor Sadmati? Mm. It's all right, Owen. Uh, go ahead and tell us what you know. Yeah, you did. Shisha was standing with a knife in his hand. Blood was dripping into Shisha's face, getting it all red. I couldn't move at all. I was so scared, I passed out. Okay, and that's when the other personalities came to. The, this eyewitness testimony from the moment of the murder. Okay, can you tell us anything else about what you saw? I... Uh, I was so scared. Oh. So, so scared. Uh, Owen! His emotions are spiraling out of control. Something must have really frightened... Like, watching a murder? Is he alright? His emotions are running wild because he's trying to recall something frightening to him. Like a murder. I recommend a therapy session right away. For how to handle seeing a dead body. And someone murdered right in front of you. I, I see. Uh, yes, uh, please whatever, do whatever you can to help the poor boy. Will do, your honor. Better find the cause of these out of control emotions pronto. He saw a murder. <laughs> oh, we're getting noise. Uh. Sisho standing with a knife in his hand. Blood was dripping onto Sisho's face and getting it all red. Okay. I couldn't move at all. I'm so scared I passed out. Well, I was, uh... Poor kid, he's absolutely terrified of something. Whatever it is, it might be the root cause of his out-of-control emotions. We better take another careful look at the images. Danny with an knife in his hand. Scared. Blood was dripping into Shisho's face and getting it all red. I don't want to ask about that. I couldn't move at all. I was so Alright, well, that's not helpful. So... Shisho was standing with a knife in his hand. But also while standing, blood was dripping onto Shisho's face. That's weird. Yeah, tell me more about the blood. Yeah, blood was dripping down onto Shisho's face. Blood, I don't remember seeing any blood in the crime scene photos. Besides, the victim was standing upright. How could blood drip down onto his face? As I expected, all we managed to obtain from this child is a tale he dreamt up. I guess it's a little weird for blood to drip onto the victim's face if he was standing up. Unless it dripped down from the ceiling or something. What do you think, Simon? Don't know. 
Wins one confused and upset kid right now, so who knows how accurate his memory is. Maybe it's time for that thing instead. Huh, what thing? The thing you and your cohorts do. What do you call it? Rotate your thinking about? Oh, you mean turn your thinking around. Yes, whatever. It's the same thing either way. No, it isn't. Who's ever heard of rotating your thinking? <laughs> I mean, rotate is... Hey, wait a minute. What? You know what, Simon? In this case, I think rotate just might work perfectly after all. Come again. Because of the way he was looking at things. All I have to do is rotate things by 90 degrees. When he saw his master, Owen must have been... Lying on the floor. Doing a handstand. Owen must have been lying on the floor when he witnessed his master's murder. What? It makes sense because he would have been passed out. That's the conclusion I arrived at when I rotated my thinking by 90 degrees. Which means that all of the visuals in my matrix were off by 90 degrees. And... This means Master Tornado was also lying on the floor, which solves another mystery. Which mystery is that? The mystery of how blood could have been dripping onto the victim's face. It becomes much easier to imagine how that could happen if he was lying down. Like someone bleeding onto Master Tornado from somewhere up above him. Uh, I remember now, somebody was sitting up on top of Tisho. Oh, there we go. There we go. Reduction in noise. I'm trying to recall his master's bloody killer is what spooked Owen originally. The blood that stained the victim's face red came from the person sitting on top of him. The victim was holding a knife, so he likely nicked his attacker as he was fighting back. This means his assailant was injured on the face somewhere, like the forehead, perhaps. Assuming the victim and his attacker were face to face, then yes. I see, so that is what happened. Wait, hold on. This are Oh! Uh oh. And he's fine. Uh, 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 she's got hair covering her forehead, maybe. I'm gonna have to fight. Sorry, phone stop. There we go. <laughs> sorry about that. But if I recall correctly, the accused has a fresh bandage on his forehead, does he not? Uh, no, I think you're imagining things. Crap. That injury of Mr. Wetz is conclusive evidence that he committed this murder. Why? <laughs> Crap. Um. Hmm. Seems you've dug yourself into a pit you cannot crawl out of. No! Even though I figured out the reason for Owen's out of control emotions, I was raised further suspicion against my own client. What do I do now? What's the matter? You aren't thinking of throwing in the towel, are you? But it looks so bad for Bucky. I mean, he had both motive and opportunity. Plus, he has that injury on his forehead. Your Honor, I sense the defense is finally ready to let it go and move on. No! Well, Miss Sykes, I understand that you don't want to give up on your client, uh, but I won't allow you to prolong this trial without a good reason. Wait, no. That lawyer did her best, but all the signs point to the defendant's guilt. Maybe it's time she gave up. She tried everything she could. Really, really don't want to back down, but... Silence. Thank you, Simon. Athena, are you having doubts about Bucky's innocence? I, I wouldn't say that, it's just... Do you remember what you said to Bucky earlier this morning? And you believe me. Of course, no matter what, I'll believe in you to the very end. Yeah. Those are just empty words. Uh, of course not. It's just that all the cards are stacked against us. This is stuck in that line of thinking. What? Motive, opportunity, and an injury to his forehead. Is that all it takes to make you stop believing in your client? Tell me again, who are you to Bucky? Uh, I'm... I'm his Miss Chickadee lawyer. <laughs> and do your duty and believe in him until the very end. I, I will. Sim's absolutely right. I'm Bucky's lawyer. He's depending on me. Defense team, please. No fighting in my courtroom. 
I was assaulted not more than two episodes ago, three episodes ago, something like that. And you just let it slide. The defense is ready to resume, Your Honor. Prosecutor Blacko is just giving me a pep talk, that's all. Thank you, Prosecutor. <laughs> and do it for your sake. I did it for the future of what Soba. Yeah, yeah, I got it. The defense would like to now continue with Owen's therapy session. Mm, oh, no, no, would you be alright with that? Uh, okay. Um, so somebody was sitting up on top of Shisho, bleeding from their head, and smooshing something into Shisho's face. That's funny. What is it? I still hear Discord in Owen's voice, but I don't sense any inconsistencies between his statements and his emotions. And there don't seem to be any contradictions in his testimony itself, either. Okay. Ah, so that's it, huh? Did you figure something out? Your ability to sense emotions is making you focus too much on his feelings, Athena. But there's actually something he's been very vague about in his testimony. If you can clarify what he's feeling uncertain about with some evidence... You should be able to move forward from there. Uh, okay, that makes sense. I'll give it a try. I'll just update the mood matrix with the new information, and then we'll be ready to go. So I just need to present some evidence on what Owen is being vague about, huh? What is he being... He showed blood on his face and a knife in his hand. He was on the floor and somebody was smooshing something into his face. Is that it? Oh, wait, here's a new info update. I couldn't move at all. I was so scared I was passed out. Oh, that doesn't help. Okay. Somebody smooth. Well, there it is. So, so it's that it's someone. He's being vague about that. Oh, I can only present. Uh, what now? Uh, I would like to present my attorney's badge. It's also that brand new shine, but that just shows how far I've come. Uh, okay. Mm, that doesn't help. The victim was making soba noodles from scratch in the dressing room. The room is covered in soba flour. Ah, uh, okay. Smooshing something. So it was the, the soba. Shoving the deed into his face. Well, oh, there's not a lot of ever, right? I guess I'm gonna go with that, right? Based on that. Uh. uh Let's put a name to the thing Owen's uncertain of, shall we? By identifying the murder weapon that was used to suffocate the victim. Fortunately for us, I spy the murder weapon right here in this crime scene photo. Unfortunately for you, I spy nothing of the sort. The police did not spy anything of the sort during their investigation either. Pray tell, where is this murder weapon you see? You don't see it because it no longer looks the way it did when it was used as a weapon. This is what the killer pressed into Mr. Tornado's face. That's why they're... Okay. That's why they put his head in the noodles. But I was like, but they weren't found in there. But they wouldn't be because they weren't that way at the time. The mystery person that Owen saw press Soba into the victim's face, thereby suffocating him. I grow weary of your tasteless jokes. How could anyone commit murder with soft, delicate soba? The noodles would instantly fall apart if they were pressed into someone's face. Yes, I agree. Well, I disagree. There is one way the soba could have been used to suffocate the victim. What? <laughs> you explain your theory at once, Miss Sykes. To kill Master Tornado, the culprit must have smothered him with... Well, oh, wait, uh, uncooked or, uh, it had to have been uncut, right? Uncooked soba noodles or uncut soba dough. Ooh. 
That was just like, oh, it hasn't been cooked yet. But uncut is also, I don't think it's balled up. That still has the same problem, I, but uncooked. Where's the thing about... Didn't I have a thing about how to make soba noodles? One of the pieces of evidence was like directions. Soba noodles from scratch in the dressing room. Kill Mr. Nilakhoff must have smothered him with. I wish I had those directions on how they make this. Alright. He's making it from scratch, so I think the uncut dough makes more sense. Does it? There we go. The culprit must have used the soba before it was cut into noodles. In other words, the murder weapon was raw soba dough. What? Nailed it. Order, order in the court. Yes, soba dough could definitely be used to suffocate someone, uh, couldn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, are you alright, Prosecutor said Madi? I was just letting the soul of the victim know that the accused will finally face and face justice thanks to the foolish lawyer before me. Why well, don't like the sound of that. Huh? What are you talking about? Allow me to summarize your statements. Please don't. As the accused was killing the victim, he was slashed in the face by the victim's knife. The weapon he used to suffocate the victim with was the dough in the dressing room, then disposed of the murder weapon by cutting the soba into dough with noodles. Ugh. Why, you smarmy. Afterwards, the accused put the victim's face into the bowl of soba noodles and broth to wash off the blood that had dripped onto the victim's face from his own. And there you have it, the true sequence of events behind this foul affair. Now wait just a minute. I never once said that Mr. Wet was the culprit. Who but the accused knows how to cut dough into noodles defense. Mm. Mm, uh, that's a very good uh, point, Prosecutor Sadmati. Mm, I heard that cutting soba dough into uniform noodles requires considerable training. Uh, but then what about the dying message? How do you explain that? The defendant wouldn't have known about Yendo's Owen personality. Perhaps the victim was simply playing with the cars and they had no other meeting. Come on. Perhaps he spelled out Owen's name in jest sometime before his murder. Mm, that's true. From Owen's testimony, it's clear that Mr. Tornado uh, cared for the boy. Mm, it appears we've arrived at a compelling conclusion. Taking together, all of these points paint a convincing picture of the defendant's guilt. Oh, and is there anything else you can tell us? It doesn't matter how small of a detail, anything will do. Oh, you're scaring me. Oh, I'm sorry, Owen. Auntie Athena didn't mean to raise her voice. Be gentler with him. I can't forget he's only five years old. No need to be scared, okay, sweetie? Just tell us anything you can remember. Well, when I woke up, the person who killed Shisho was standing over me. And we'll just have to hear more about that in the next episode. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, we're not doing ourselves any favors. But it's alright. We'll, uh... We'll figure it out going forward. I feel like it has to be... 
just based on the people involved, like it has to be Giru, but would it be one of Yunda's personalities? Maybe. I don't know. We'll find out. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.